Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Odafe Owe. And Daf, let's start here. Thanksgiving week. What are your what are your plans for the big day? Um, well, my family's, they all flew out to uh, California. Okay. I obviously have family out there already, so. Yeah. You know, They're getting and, ready. Exactly. My brother's playing out there. They're getting ready, you know, all that stuff. So, um, I'm going to be out here in Owings Mills with uh, Michael Pierce and the family and the rest of the D-line. Nice. You know, just celebrate. So. Okay. Okay. So, he's hosting. Is he the cook? What? How's this work? Do you know? <laughs> I hope he's not the cook. But, <laughs> uh, nah. Uh, he probably has good food taste, but um, it's probably a collective effort from all the the wives, and then everyone's probably gonna bring a dish and everything. I was gonna say, yeah. So it's potluck. So what do you what do you bring? Do you bring a little Nigerian flavor to a, a Thanksgiving meal? What do you do? See, I would, but it's like my sister's not here, my mom's not mm. here. I, I haven't I haven't yet, you know, mastered the. Making the dishes, yes. Uh, okay. I, I wouldn't even want to put that on them yet. <laughs> it sounds like he's going to do the, the classic, like, run through the grocery store on the way, you yeah. know, bring the chocolate chip cookies just yeah. in the plastic container and be like, here you go, before. guys. Don't do the store-bought <laughs> apple pie or yeah, pumpkin exactly. pie. Those are trash. No. Don't do that. No, I have some taste, you know. There I you know go. what to bring. To all right, all right, all right. So, uh, Duff, one of the reasons <clears> we want to have you on is that you're balling right now. I mean, you're playing You're playing great football. Um, probably this stretch is probably the best that seems like you've played in your career. Yeah. How dialed in do you feel right now? Um, yeah, I just feel, you know, real blessed, like you said, dialed in and um, confident in all the work I did in the um, off season, and then, you know, leading up to that, my whole career, starting to, you know, marry up together and the timing starting to click. So, you know, I just got to thank God. Obviously, it can go any other way, but, you know, I'm starting to make a lot of plays, so I got to thank him. Four yeah. sacks yeah. in five games. Mm -hmm. Does that mean something to you? I mean, you're 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 stacking these things yeah. over the course of the last month. Does that mean something to you when those numbers start piling up? Um, yeah, it does. You know, um, my old vets always used to tell me that, um, you know, don't get discouraged that once one comes in, you know, they, they come in piles, they come in bunches, you know. So, um, you know, I'm glad that, you know, it's it's come consistently each one each game. But, you know, I'm trying to stack like a few <laughs> each game, you know, that's the next step I'm trying to take. But I'm blessed, humbly grateful for everything that's happened already. So. Yeah, I'm really happy to see it. Honestly, yeah. I'm really happy for you, especially because, I mean, not only just your journey and I know how hard you've worked, but like it, it's also felt like you've been like that close to so <laughs> many more sacks. And it's just like, gosh, to like see those numbers come, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just like really cool. It, it Has that kind of added to this <laughs> feeling for you that like it's been a whisker away for so long seemingly? I, I honestly would like challenge you, like would you rather want to be not even close to the fight <laughs> or be right there every single time and then <laughs> right. something just happens. The ball gets out or some <laughs> flag and hold it. Right. But, um, no, nah, I feel like, yeah, it does make it kind of frustrating that, you know, you're always so close and a lot. Of, and then, you know, what I'm kind of dealing with this year, you know, it kind of being in my hands a little bit and then it's slipping away. But I, I like to look at it in a positive, you know, mindset that, you know, look how many you've missed and look how, how many you've gotten already. So right. where could you possibly be at plus the games you miss and everything? So, you know, obviously there's work to be done. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking in the positive light. Well, plus pressure. I mean, even if you don't get yeah. the sack, pressure is exactly. a very good thing in a number of other metrics. And that's something that I think maybe fans don't really yeah. take uh, as much stock in yeah. is that like pressure causes turnovers, causes incompletions, all that stuff. So yeah. even if you don't get the sack to your earlier question, I think you still want to be in the fight. Oh, I still want to be. <laughs> I was just, you know, I was playing that was out kid, but I still want to, yeah, I still want to Emotionally, I can get it. Yeah, yeah, Emotionally, sure, sure. I know what Mike McDonald would choose. Yeah, 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 he exactly. would choose the pressure. I'll take yeah, yeah, that. Exactly, yeah. um, I'm actually curious, like there's been a little bit of conversation, like uh, Robert Sala, the Jets coach kind of talked about this. I'm sure you saw the clip of him talking about how sacks are overrated yeah. and <laughs> You know, there's been like kind of a, a conversation about that. What's your take on that? Like, it, I always feel like it's one of those things where some guys say like sacks are overrated, and then you start getting them. And you're like, I got all these sacks. Like, all these <laughs> sacks. like check it out. Hey, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That? You know, like everyone wants to get the sacks. Obviously, that's how you get paid and everything. But yeah, in terms of like a defense, you know, a structural like, combined defense and everything, I feel like pressures they're not you don't weigh as heavy as sacks. But, you know, they actually make a big difference, you know, in timing, messing up the rhythm of the QB. You know, you don't know if that can make a play make a play for Kyle Hamilton or Geno. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you get a pressure and it, that pushes him closer to Jadavion or closer to a beak. So it's like, it's kind of playing point guard with those pressures, you know, you just assist and stuff like that. But, you know, everyone likes to say that, you know, once you don't got the sacks, but once you got the sacks, you're like, oh, yeah, I got the sacks. <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, it's, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wait. 
kind of differently. You yeah, know? you mentioned point guard, and and that's something I want to talk about. And, and Jonas Schaefer from the Baltimore Banner wrote a, a cool story about this, about how our defense really does kind of view the pass rush as basketball plays almost. There's pick and rolls. There's a, a lot of stunts, you know, setting picks on guys. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Is that some terminology that you use in the room? Is is yeah. it similar to basketball? Yeah, it's similar in terms of actually a bunch of things like movement, obviously, and pass rush, you know, you like manipulating leverage and stuff like that. And in that sense, you know, setting up your rush, but also, like you said, um, picks and stunts, like obviously in, in basketball, they have, um, what you said, a screen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, pick and roll pick and, and roll, all that, right? Back, 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 uh, <laughs> back screen, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Actually, it, it is kind of like basketball it is in that sense. But, um, yeah. you know, we're all like a bunch of athletic guys, too, and everything. So we can pay, play off that read You, and you have a little basketball history. And he's oh, taking yeah. you back to your hooping days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I thank God that he put that in my life, you know, early. So <laughs> everything happens for a reason, I guess. So Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, an area where it seems like you have kind of developed – is this this conversation of speed and power? Okay, so like you come into the NFL and the scouting report on you is like you're a, you're a speed rusher. That's yeah. what the that's what the scouting report said. Mm -hmm. But then this year, I know Chuck Smith when he got here, he talked about adding moves to the equation, yeah. and and you told him you're going to be a power rusher. Yeah. You right? told all of us that. You told all of us. <laughs> and you told Chuck, right? I did tell you guys. You were kind of wrong. Like, I mean, you got power, but I'm seeing a lot of other stuff here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to let you know, breaking news, you're you're not just a power rusher yeah. and or, or a speed rusher. Yeah, I mean, who says I didn't say that for a reason? Oh, well, that, that, you're trick, setting you know, them up. Just setting them up. You know? well, here, here's <laughs> my take on it. Tell, tell me if I'm, if I'm on the right track. Like, that the scouting report is like, he's a speed guy. Yeah. And that you were kind of manifesting it. Like, I'm, I'm more than a speed guy. More than a speed guy, yeah. Exactly, you know, I can add that to it as well. But I feel like my game, you know, um, in different games, like it, re it can require different things, mm. you know, based on what the t O tackle is. But obviously, a big thing that Chuck, you know, harped on me, you know, this year was not trying to com contort your game based on what the tackle did. Mm. So to say, you want to have more of a, like attacking mentality and have him adjust to what you're doing. But at the same sense, you got to look at your opponent and what he's best at. If he's, if he's like a 400-pound, 6'9 guy, you, you're going to want to run past him or, you know, break his feet down and stuff like that. So I'm a speed rusher right now, but I would say that, you know, at the, when it, when I need it, I can put that power in and slip inside or even, you know, slip back outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, when I when I look at the tape, I mean, the spin move's really working, kind of ripping. I mean, I really like this one this past week, and, and mostly that was an effort sack, right? Yeah. I mean, you just kept rushing, kept yeah. rushing. But the, the double hand swipe, yeah. you yeah. know, and, uh -huh. and uh, now Orlando kind of, he, he held those hands back. Yeah. And so uh, I've just been really impressed by the different variety of moves that you've used that have all kind of worked. Yeah. Can you talk about kind of the repertoire and, and the building of that for you um yeah it's kind of like goes back to the basketball you know trying to manipulate leverage and trying to you know stack rushes and build on like you know what i've shown him and stuff like mm -hmm. that so like i've just been trying to show that speed 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 so that they can't just sit at the line or they can't just like sit on my hezzies or mm -hmm. sit on my spin because they have to they're afraid of me taking that edge right so um you know once i start burning the edge it opens up my inside games and i love i love the spin obviously like you said and then you know, I feel like as the year goes by, I want to add more of that power mm. so that when they do try to anchor, I can just slip by. Right. Kind of like what I did at the Detroit game. But, right, right. You know, so, you know, I, I thank God for a lot of repertoires, but you got to know when to use them. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ryan mentioned going up against Orlando Brown last game. Yeah. Is You guys are forever going to be linked because, yeah. you know, they traded him and got the pick and ended up taking you. And then now you guys are in the same division going up against each other twice a year. Yeah. Is um, it Does it mean something when you go to play him? Um, it, it, I would like to say it doesn't. Obviously, like you know, you want to be focused on the the, the team at hand. But obviously, I like I like to, you know, always try to create not an enemy, but create someone that I'm trying to attack, just so it helps me, you know, play play harder and you know, just be more, you know, persistent in, in what the goal is and in, in my rush or you know, playing the run or something like that. But you know, I, I have no beef with anybody or nothing like that. It's just more of a mental thing, just mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. suit myself up and stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, what what has Chuck Smith really brought to the outside linebackers room? How is he different? You know, what are the changes with him? Um. Yeah, Chuck, man, my dog, man. You know, he's just he's a loose spirit. You know, he just brings that like calmness and you know confidence to what you're supposed to bring in the pass rush. And like mm -hmm. you, you're supposed to be serving yourself. You're supposed to like know that, you know, whatever move you have, the, the, the tackle's not going to be able to stop it. So mm -hmm. he brings that swag to it. 
you know, just knowing what your move's going to be at the top of the rush, which is something that's really helped me. And then, you know, just that rip. He says, he always says, bring that rip. <laughs> that's what he always says, you know. So, like, just to remind us that, you know, to finish your rush and to get your hips through. Right. Just to bring that rush, that rip. And, yeah. it's, you know, it's going to help you a lot of rushes. That's how, that's how you finish them, right? Literally, that's, yeah. that's the, the last piece. Yeah, because like you said, the Orlando sack, you know, if I don't rip, he's watching me pass and I'm not be able to turn back in, you know. Right. So, yeah. What I've seen with Chuck and you guys, that's always been a confident group, that pass rush group. But he seems to like take that to an, a, another level. Like he'll say before games, "You guys, you guys got the highlights ready." He'll say to me, coming yeah. off the field, "Like get get ready for some highlights because we're gonna be bringing <laughs> yeah. them today." I remember the beginning <laughs> of the season when I was talking to him for the story I wrote about you, and he was like, "We are gonna whoop some a this year." <laughs> like he is a confident yeah. dude. I love it. Yep. And he manifests it, and that's what I like. You know, you just gotta you can't do it unless you say you're gonna do it. You know, yep. and. Even times we're like, you know, we're like, all right, Chuck, shut up, man. <laughs> Get it, man. He's just always harping, which I respect because a lot of times, whatever you're going through in the game, you know, pregame, you need that, like, constant, like, all right, this is the plan. what we're doing. Don't contort to nothing. Do you see anybody? Just keep steadfast in what you're trying to do. So, you know, I respect him for that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. So uh, John Harbaugh said this week, you know, he was asked about how you're playing. I'm sure you saw the quote of him saying that he feels like you, you, you're just scratching the surface. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about your potential since the time that you got here, that you have this, you know, you started playing football a little bit late, and that story's been kind of well documented. But is that how you see it? Like, do you feel like this is still just you scratching the surface of what you can become as a player? Yeah, uh, you know, humbly, like, God's given me a lot of abilities and stuff like that. But I really feel like, um, you know, I'm really just learning. I'm just learning, even, like, every day. And I try to get better every day. And like I said, I started late. Um me and David started late, so that's another guy that, you know, we're just scratching the surface. And I feel like I'm having to learn on the fly because obviously where I had got you know, drafted and, you know, expectations and everything, which, you know, sharpens a knife and it makes you better. Yeah. But, like, I'm learning on the fly. So, like, I like it better in that sense because I just – I'm learning what it takes, you know, every year. And, you know, there's going to be years where obviously you go through it and then, you know, it doesn't happen how you want to, but – you're learning, you're building like those, you're getting those scars and everything. So you're learning what what it takes. When, so when that, that, that situation comes back again, you know how to, you know, handle it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really appreciative of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to where, um, you know, I, I could take my career and everything. So, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that. You, you talk about expectations and learning yeah. on the fly and, you know, you had, instant success right yeah. i mean week two your second nfl game you get the sack strip against the chiefs you're yeah. the afc defensive defensive player of the week right yeah. and, and had a really strong rookie season and then yet last year was a little bit more of a challenge there were a lot of those near yeah. sacks right yeah. and the numbers just weren't there like you yeah. talked about and one thing i've always just been impressed with you is you're very open about that like you're a thoughtful guy yeah. and like i don't know you just are uh, you keep it real yeah. right talk to us about how you dealt with that how much of a struggle was that and um, what that did for you as a person? Uh, yeah, no, nah, it was tough, but I would say, like, you know, I, everyone goes through seasons where, like, you know, you sharpen, off, you sharpen yourself, you know, and I feel like that was something that I needed mm -hmm. because, you know, coming into the league, you know, people forget before that I was a developmental guy. I still am, but I was a developmental guy, so the expectations were there, but it's right. not like they were really expecting, and then some, right. and I started playing well. So then the expectations go up even more. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, I started playing like a few years ago. So, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so You're like, like, don't get ahead of exactly, yourself here. I know you know what I mean? Exactly. You kind of shot yourself in the foot a little yeah, bit. I you mean, know? yeah, you know, I did that. But, <laughs> ex <laughs> but exactly, um, just, you know, that, that, that second year is just learning what it really took to be a pro. Mm -hmm. You know, my routine, how I had to handle, like, mental mentally, like, my approach to the games, how I handled every practice, lifts, like la like last year li really taught me like I had to get serious with that. So mm. I feel like you know everything happens for a reason. So this year is just a manifestation of everything I learned my first year and my second year, and you know hopefully it's just you know it's just gonna get even better. And then it had to be frustrating then too. You you have a good training camp. You have a really strong summer. You yeah. start off week one against the Texans. You're yeah. playing really well, yeah. and then the ankle injury, exactly. right? And yeah. like so, was that did that feel like another hurdle for you this year? Where you're like, oh my god, not again. I can't have another. You know, I, I'm done sharp. I, I don't want to keep sharpening. Yeah, you know, what well, I mean? it felt like another. I was like, yo, yeah. what's going on? Like, there's no way. There's another obstacle. But mm -hmm. you know, if you 
you know, people that are not, if you don't see it, you would you would miss it and think that that's the end. Mm-hmm. Not knowing if you keep on etching, you know, the diamond is right out on the next side. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of guys like Weave, you know, I was low after that, after that injury because, you know, I thought I was hitting my stride. Mm-hmm. Guy like Weave, you know, came up to me and was like, man, you got to look at the positive and see, you know, you're going to be healthy when you come back. And that you got to look at that. It's not even an injury where you're going to be out for the rest of the season. So just looking at the positives of every situation that can go awry. Mm-hmm. And that really helped me. So I got to thank Weave too. You know, yeah, those cool. two guys, Chuck and Weave, they're, yeah. they're close. And, it, and and I know a lot of you guys have just talked about how beneficial they are. I, I'm curious, when you're going through all this, like how much how much pressure is there to be a first-round pick? Uh, I mean, there's pressure, obviously, but it's like it's like what you want. But you got you know you got to be on your Q's and P's like at all times. You know, you got to you just know that. You know, you're drafted for a situ- for a certain reason that everyone's depending on you. And you want that, obviously. You're a competitor. You want that. That's what you train for. You're not training to be second fiddle. It's just that when you're in that situation, you got to have the mental fortitude and the belief in yourself to, you know, to own it. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's tough, but it's like it's a good privilege. You know what I mean? Like it's a great privilege. A great privilege. So, so like this year when you're coming back from the ankle injury and you're working your way back and you're behind the scenes, yeah. like – what does that process look like? Who are you leaning on? Like, how are you keeping your mental focus, like, kind of in the right place yeah. when you've had some ups and downs and you're, like, dealing with all of that? And, like, yeah. I, I'm sure that, like, I've heard plenty of guys talk about it. Like, it's hard not to, like, just pile that on, yeah. you know? And it's like, you kind of alluded to it. It's like, no, not again yeah. or anything like that. Like, well, yeah, and, and kind of, you know, you said, Oh, I feel like you all are always talking about me to the media. You said <laughs> I caught that little comment yeah. and to like block out that noise, you know, when, when there is noise around you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like I said, uh, there's a, a few things I did, you know, I was just trying to cancel out all the social media, cancel out all the noise, just focus on myself, my family, you know, um, you know, coaches, just like the people that, you know, really tried to like, really matter for me in that situation and were there for me, you know, from the jump with my father and my mom brothers you know just friends you know mm-hmm. just to give you a perspective of what really matters and stuff you know what i mean yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so you're in your third year so what as you look ahead now you know like what is what do you see like what what is what do you see as these future goals for this season and beyond for you um you know i keep like i said i always like to keep the goals you know close yeah. to my hip but you know just to be dominant and just to always I want I want the every opposing offense that we go to to always account for you know Adafi and me and and you know if I could do that that can that helps our defense that helps the guys around me so I just want to affect the game like tremendously every single game every single snap so. mm-hmm. that's cool it's, it's like we've talked about two two guys who I think kind of have similar ish stories to you in certain regards uh, who are also on this defense is Patrick Queen and Matt Abike. Yeah. And like these are you know, PQ also a, f- a first round pick, mm-hmm. and he had like some ups and downs in his career. Now he's playing great. You know he's going to get a big payday. Mm-hmm. Matabike, same thing. <laughs> you know like he's got it. Both of these guys, the, the Brinks truck is coming yeah. for both these guys. <laughs> um, and and both of them have kind of had some a lot of potential highs and lows. Do you look at the way that like those players have blossomed? you know, as their career has gone on, like they just get better. And I see the same thing with you. Like you're just getting better yeah. every year. Do you look at that as like, this is an example of where my career is going? Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel blessed because I was around them, you know, when obviously they were going through the troubles and they were still like flashing, but, you know, it wasn't as consistent as it is now. So I saw like their mentality switch, their routines, like get better. And then, one thing, like, they always, always believed in themselves. Like, they always knew that they were going to be that guy, that they could make plays. And that was one thing that I always tried to stick to myself, especially PQ. Like, he was going – I remember that was my rookie year. He was going through it that year. and But he always knew he was that boy. And, like, he always knew that, you know, if he got his chance and, you know, if he really, like, focused up on what he had to do, like, he was going to shine. So, you know, just that confidence that both guys have and – the, the attention to detail, especially that Beeks has as well. Like, Beeks wrote down all his goals before the season and was diligent on it. And I still see it in his garage, you know, like he crosses out what he has to do. Mm-hmm. He has to, like, I, I really respect Beeks for what he, you know, his, his focus and his discipline this year. So those guys, you know, they, they, they do everything that they're about to get. 
That's cool. Mm-hmm. Is there el- any element for you of being like, I want to show the Ravens over the second half of this season, you know, coming up fifth year option decisions, all that stuff, you know, like, hey, man, Eric, you watching like the second <laughs> half of the season is about to be popping kind of situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I just I just want everyone just to watch, you know, I'm just, I just I feel like these next few games, I'm, I'm really about to hit my stride. And, you know, yeah. I just I feel like that, like I said, you know, podcast I did like last year a few years ago that you know I'm gonna be better in, in the future like yeah that's when my that's when my when I'm projected to be you know who I'm really supposed to be right and I feel like um the real football players that football people that watch that and understand what's going on in the field watch the film and everything you'll be able to see that so mm-hmm. EDC, man, you know, (laughs) I know you're a film guy, man. (laughs) Well, it's exciting, man. I mean, I feel like it's all come together. Like it's kind of, yeah, the future is bright, but the future is also now. Like it's come together and you're getting healthier and you're balling out, man. And we really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Well, welcome back into the Sea Geek Studio. Big thanks to Dafe for stopping by. I appreciate his perspective and the conversation with him. Also, we want to give a shout out to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, which is an official sports betting partner of the Baltimore Ravens. They've got a limited time offer that you don't want to miss. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the promo code FLOCK. If you're a new user, you can get a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Again, the promo code is FLOCK at DraftKings. You need to be at least 21 and physically present in Maryland to play. For help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call 1-800-GAMBLER. So, you know, I mentioned uh, really enjoyed the conversation with him. Um, I... Like I I agree with his take that the like we're we're just starting to see the glimpses and like mm-hmm. he's not mm-hmm. he's not a, a finished player yeah yet. well it, it's kind of like I said to him he was almost his own worst enemy at the beginning of his career because he got off to such a hot start you know here it was this guy who had no sacks his final year at Penn State in college he comes in the NFL and he's this athletic freak you know coming into it and and people are like well but you're gonna have to be patient with him because you know he didn't have any sacks last year at Penn State and and all the stuff he's like got a late start to football we're gonna have to be patient but like we got a we got a real player here who could be something big and then he had so much success you know first few weeks in the league he had to sack his first game sack his first game then the force fumble the second game that won the game against the Chiefs a huge moment that like all of a sudden it was like oh actually we don't have to be patient Mm -hmm. he's good right now he's awesome and it's like well you know happy to have the success but like also I'm not a finished player yeah and so uh you know he's just another example of and I think this especially applies to quarterbacks where there's such high expectations for first round picks and you have to have immediate success. And if you don't, well, it's like, well, then they're a bust. Right. And like, certainly that wasn't really the, the conversation with Odafe, but like, I think after the start that he got off to, there was kind of questions about, is he ever going to materialize and become that player that we all envisioned? And now we're starting to see that now that he's healthy. Now that he has these better tools, all this stuff, like, we're seeing it come to fruition, and and I couldn't be happier to, for for him, really. Yeah, that's why I asked him the question about the pressure of first round picks because I've heard I've heard a number of players talk about that, you know, especially yep. like on the other side of it, you know, when they're in it, it's kind of like ah, you know, pressure is manufactured. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. really, but as a first round pick, like you hear the noise, you know that they took you first for a reason, mm-hmm. and so you whether it's vocalized or not, like I think a lot of these players feel that expectation that's on their shoulders, him being among them and so I think that like and you also just have high expectations for yourself like you want to play well for sure. you're a confident player and so I think that like we're, we're seeing that and I can tell you like the coaches and this speaks to John Harbaugh's point like the coaches really believe like there is a lot more meat on the bone mm-hmm. like this we're not seeing the this is not like the pinnacle of the, the Adafe Owe story like, yeah. this is we are on our way up here. Yep. And so, you know, like I even go back to, and we kind of talked about this previously around the trade deadline. Like, you know, it was kind of like, oh, are the Ravens going to add a running back? Are they going to add a pass rusher? Mm-hmm. You know, what are they going to do? And, you know, I, I think that part of the, they've had confidence in this, they have the most sacks in the NFL. So they've got a good group there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like they're got a good pass rush going there. But like, Owe is coming on strong. Like that, that's one that's of the guys. Part of the like, equation. That's part of the equation there. So mm-hmm. you, if if you were to bring in another guy, then that limits opportunities for him to a certain extent. 
And so, like, this is a guy who you want playing. And, Absolutely. like, you're seeing the benefit. Similar to the running back situation, you don't add a running back. Now, Keaton now Mitchell's Keaton Mitchell, getting this right. opportunity, and we're all excited <laughs> about Keaton Mitchell. So, like, and you're kind of glad you didn't add a running back. Sometimes right? the, the, the moves you don't make turn out to be the best ones. And yep. I actually think that could be the case for both the outside linebacker position and the running back position for the Ravens. I totally agree. And, and let's be honest, over the first half of the season, really the pass rush from the outside linebacker standpoint, at least, was kind of carried by Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Van Noy. And and I don't think that's going to change. Those guys are still playing at a really high level, but they're two veterans. And I think that over the second half of the season here, you're going to see Odafe kind of take more of the reins there as these veterans, you know, you have to manage their snaps a little bit more and, and whatnot uh, later in the season, especially like it's, it's kind of, on Odafe a little bit to step to the forefront, and I think he's very much capable of doing that, and we're starting to see that. I think he's ready, too. I, yep. I, th- I just think that like a lot of this has been building for him where he feels like, all right, now is my time, yep. and it, now we're seeing the benefits of that. The shame of it is, you know, at the beginning of the season, it was really Odafe and, and David Ajabo, and yep. he mentioned him, and, and you know, I know Odafe feels really bummed that that hasn't been able to come to fruition because of the injury to David. Now we haven't had a final, any kind of final say that says he isn't coming back or anything like this. Um, John Harbaugh kind of teased it, teased that there was an announcement coming on at some point on that. We haven't gotten that announcement. Yeah. So f- till we get that announcement, I'm going to knock on wood that David Ajabo could come back at some point here. Yeah. You know. So, but he has not um, returned to practice yet. And he has not. No. There's been no indication that a return to practice is right on around the corner. Yes. So. Um, that's been that's kind of the bummer you know that's what we're waiting to see and we're hoping to see but hey if that has to come next year then so be it it's Adafi's turn and he's kind of got a ball with a patch on his shoulder for his guy you know um yeah and I think the Ravens are going to need him this week I know know, he mentioned family being out in LA he's got family out in LA so this will be a big game for him I'm sure the ticket request was was steep for him (laughs) um and you know just to kind of roll it forward a little bit to this game against the Chargers you know this is uh the Ravens need Oway and the rest of these pass rushers to be at their best because uh, Justin Herbert's on the other side of this thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, you know, I think that team-wide, when you look at the Chargers, this is a team that needs a win pretty bad, right? If, if you just zoom so, out. Yeah, so do the Ravens. So do the Ravens, yeah. As John Harbaugh said on Monday. Ex- exactly. The Chargers are 4-6, and six, last place in the division. They take another L. It's not done, done, but it might as well be for them. Their playoff hopes are really kind of on the ropes, so it's a it's a really big game for them. They've lost four of their last six, but when you look at it, a lot of close losses for them. I mean, they had Dallas, KC were the two of those first losses, then close games against Detroit and Green Bay. Right, Detroit's a good team too, and so this is this is a better team, I think, than what you see on paper. Right, like they're four and six. You're like, eh. But you look down the roster, talk about Herbert. They have a lot of really good players on both sides of the ball. So this is by no means. You talk about, oh, you're going against the last place team. By no means is this a cakewalk. No, I mean the Chargers are loaded with talent. You've got Herbert. You got Austin Eckler. You have Keenan Allen. You have Derwin James. Bosa's not going to play. You know he's dealing with an injury, so he's not going to play. They still got Khalil Mack. Yep. So yeah, there's talent littered throughout that that roster. So I, I think that. I mean, everybody's surprised that they're sitting here at four and six. Mm-hmm. Like, like there's a reason this is a Sunday night football game. Yep. I think when the schedule makers made this game, the thought was like, this might be a battle between two of the best teams in the league. Yep. You have two of the best young quarterbacks in the league. And Certainly Lamar two of the best Justin teams Herbert. in the AFC. So Probably like, two playoff teams is yeah, what the thinking that was. That was the thought. And, and it's, it's surprising that it's not the case. But uh, look, the Ravens know that just how dangerous the Chargers team can be. So, I, I mean, I don't think that overlooking or anything like that is even on the equation. But I right. think that like... I, I I think that for for fans who are looking at this game, like you got you got to take the Chargers really seriously because they've got a ton of talent on that roster. Absolutely. Well, Justin Herbert's eighth in the league in passing yards so far. I mean, this is a strong arm dude who, when you look at pure talent, he's right up there as one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, without a doubt, can make every single throw. Incredibly strong arm, accurate, can run. Like he can do it all. Well, he got the. I mean, Lamar got the contract, then Herbert got the contract, and then right. Burrow got the contract. So yeah, those are three of the best in the business, right there. And that's playing. That's the you know the Ravens played the Bengals last week, and now they're playing the Chargers this week. Like those are three of the best young quarterbacks in football. Yep. Well, and when I look back on the Ravens' schedule so far, I think that Justin Herbert might be the 
toughest challenge that they've faced yet. You know, you got Joe Burrow in week two when he was still kind of hobbled by the calf, right? Then you got him healthy this past week, but he for was injured. Half, he right. was injured for, uh, for most of the game. And so Jared Goff has had a really good season, but I think that Herbert's a more talented quarterback than Jared Goff is personally. Mm-hmm. So to me, the, this is the stiffest test yet for the Ravens secondary. It remains to be seen if Marlon Humphrey is going to be back on the field. That would certainly help. You know, they have Keenan Allen, who's fourth in the league in receiving yards. They have some really talented, Austin Eckler. They have talented pass catchers up and down, and they got a guy that can deliver the ball anywhere. So, like, this, to me, is going to be kind of an inv- indication. And now we already know where the Ravens secondary kind of stands to this point. I think they've proven it over enough games, but... You're going into a stretch of the season now where you're going to get Matthew Stafford, you're going to get Tua, Brock Purdy, Matt, uh, who else am I missing that's still remaining on the schedule? Uh, D- Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, yep. exactly. Those quarterbacks are all coming. So this is kind of the first step into what's going to be a run of tough challenges from a quarterback perspective, and we'll see how ready this Ravens defense is. Yeah, I mean, I think this Ravens defense is really good. I think over the past few games, they've given up you know, more yards and points than they certainly expect, you know, mm-hmm. certainly in that Browns game. Yep. Even in that Bengals game, they were mad about that late touchdown. So, like, they don't expect to give up many points. Now, this is going to be a tougher challenge, I yep. think, with this offense. You know, I think another interesting subplot, you talk about the weapons that, that, <laughs> mm-hmm. that they have. Quentin Johnson, rookie yeah. wide receiver for them was taking one pick ahead of Zay Flowers. And I, I you know, there was a lot there was a lot of talk about the Ravens potentially taking a receiver in the draft. There was tons of there was a lot of talk uh, smoke around Quentin Johnston. Yeah, he was certainly somebody who was mocked to the Ravens in plenty of in yep. plenty of these out of TCU. And so they take him right before the Ravens end up taking Zay Flowers. I think that Zay Flowers was always the guy for the Ravens who they were hoping would get to them mm-hmm. at this point. Um, hasn't been a great rookie season uh, for Quentin. You know, kind of a tough... Yeah, 20 catches history. for 183 yards and, and one touch. Yeah, and so I think the Ravens are certainly glad about getting Zay Flowers, but just an interesting subplot. We talked yeah. about this earlier this year with Jackson Smith and Jigba who went to Seattle. Mm-hmm. Similar kind of story. Yeah, definitely. And, and Zay Flowers told us then that... Uh, he doesn't have a list of all the, the players that were taken ahead of him that he like crosses out like <laughs> Amon Ross St. Brown has yeah, done. Yeah. You know, it's made it's been a kind of a story of his. Zay doesn't really hold any animosity or any grudges over where he was picked. He just says, I'm happy to be where I am. That's about it. Yeah. And so it's not a storyline for him, but for Ravens fans, I think, you know, you look at Zay Flowers, leads the team in in targets, receptions, like he's been balling out. You're glad the way it worked out, yeah. you know, and and I always had a feeling that Zay wasn't really the Chargers mm-hmm. flavor. They like the big body dudes, Mike Williams, uh, you know, even Keenan Allen is a strong dude. He's not super tall, but he's a big body guy. Um, you know, Joshua Palmer yeah. for them is another big, tall receiver. That's kind of their M.O., not yeah. as much the smaller dudes. So, um, you know, it's early. It's early. You can't make final decisions or, or proclamations on draft choices, but yeah. I'm going to put it in pencil that this is a w for the ravens on that well i, I love the zay flowers pick so i'll, yeah. put, I'll put in pan. i'll put in pan that i'm on board with the zay flowers pick. 100 percent. i'm just saying it, when we, in yeah. history in the yeah. in the scope of history you know i i'm feeling good about that one where yeah. we stand yeah a couple other just interesting notes um i think this will be a big game for kyle van noy he played for the chargers last yep. year um five sacks for them last year he's already got six this year for the Ravens. Yeah, and I think the guys, whenever they go up against an old team, whether they say it or not, I think it means a little something extra. For sure. And I think that certainly Kyle will be motivated by that this week. Yeah, well, he was definitely motivated by being on the couch for so long. Yeah. Now he's balling off the couch, as he likes to say. But um, yeah, th- maybe the fact that I don't know if it was in play that the Chargers could have brought him back or or not. Um, but I'm sure he'll be looking to go out there and, and show him that you know, I'm still very much uh, uh, can be a dominant player, can be a really good player in this league. So that'll be a subplot. And I think another interesting one to talk about is Derwin James and Kyle Hamilton. Yeah. And, you know, obviously not going against each other, but it's just kind of interesting to me to think back to 2018, the 2018 draft. There was, again, a lot of buzz between the Ravens and Derwin James. Could could they pick him? The Ravens had the chance to do so. They were on the clock at number 16, and they passed on Derwin James, ended up trading back twice, and took Hayden Hurst, uh, the tight end out of South Carolina with that pick. And then once they... Once, the once Ra- they ultimately made the pick, Derwin was off the board. Correct, he, yeah. He so Derwin went at 17. Yeah. The, the Ravens could have had him at 16. They, they said no. Back. They moved back. Derwin went at 17 to the Chargers. Um, 
now Derwin James, like that move back, obviously, you know, things with Hayden Hurst didn't exactly work out in Baltimore. Derwin James became a really good player with the Chargers, three time Pro Bowler, two time first team all pro. And you kinda it's it was kind of that one that got away a little bit to me. Mm-hmm. Right. And and Eric DeCasa even told us if we had made the pick at sixteen it would have been Derwin James. Mm -hmm. He told us that on this podcast. On the Lounge Podcast. On the Lounge Podcast that year. And now the trade back ultimately ended up kind of working out, right? The Ravens ended up getting Mark Andrews with one of the picks that they got in that trade back ultimately. They shuffled picks like 10 times, but ultimately it landed on Mark Andrews. Win. Yeah. Right? Um, You got Lamar Jackson still in that round. Win. That 2018 (laughs) draft was epic. Yeah. But if you could have had Derwin James at the front of it too, that would have been kind of nice too. Right. You know, so um, it was kind of like that 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 player that got away a little bit. And now you fast forward, and Kyle Hamilton kind of is that guy, right? And the Ravens used the, a first round pick to get him, and gosh, it's panned out. And like Derwin James almost is the player that Kyle Hamilton. I don't even want to say like can be like maybe already is mm-hmm. maybe already is better. I I, I don't know, but there's no doubt to me that Kyle Hamilton's one of the top safeties in the league. I mean, you look at the PFF rankings, he's got the fifth highest grade coverage grade of any safety in the league. Number one in pass rush, which by the way, like that matters. It's not a nothing, right? Like top grade of any safety in the league. Like that's what Derwin James and he are. They're these hybrids who can cover, who can get after the quarterback a little bit. They're going to end up with a handful of sacks each year. They get a handful of interceptions. Like that's what it is. Kyle Van Noy kind of is that player and it's been a huge boon for this Ravens defense. Yeah. I mean, when, when the Ravens draft to Kyle Hamilton and you hear all the scouting reports (laughs) and all the breakdowns on what he could be, he's, basically developed into the best case scenario of all that stuff. Yep. And Derwin James is a little bit of the model. It was the same stuff. It was the same stuff. You can play him back. Yep. He can cover tight ends. He has this great versatility. You can put him at the line of scrimmage. He's a big hitter. All of this, it seems like a carbon copy to a certain extent. Yep. And now Hamilton is playing at such a high level. By the way, Pro Bowl voting opens next week. Mm-hmm. So uh, Good plug. Kyle Hamilton is definitely a guy that you should be voting in for the Pro Bowl when that opens on Monday. Just a little plug. Let's there. give our guy Adafi Owe some. Sure. You know, if he keeps getting a bunch of sacks, has a keeps his streak going, let's give him some votes. Sure. Owe, Hamilton. But so I, I think that the, yeah, the, the Derwin James, Kyle Hamilton comparisons, I think, are, are fascinating and I think that they're legitimate. Yep. And I, I think that Kyle is, he has proven to be one. Like he's been one of the best players on this defense all season long, mm-hmm. and I think he'll continue to be. Yep. Talking about the Chargers defense, that really has been their weakness this season. I mean, they have the second lowest ranked defense in the league yeah. in terms of yards allowed, 393 yards per game. You know, that has been their their weakness, which is odd because they have a lot of talented defensive players. You talk, Derwin James. Now, Joey Bosa, like you said, he's out. Uh, he's likely reportedly going to go on IR, not going to play in this game. But they have uh, uh, Khalil, Mack. Khalil Mack, exactly, has 11 sacks. And so they have a lot of talented players, but it just hasn't really added up uh, to success for them defensively. So in this game, that's that's where the Ravens have to make hay, right? I mean, the Ravens are sitting here averaging over 30 points a game for the past five, five games. Can they do that against the Chargers? Yeah, I think they can. What they have to avoid is the turnovers. That's where the Chargers have been one of the best teams in the league in turnover differential. They're tied for the league lead in forced and recovered fumbles. Uh, And that's where you can get into trouble with Khalil Mack and such. Mm -hmm. Um, Is you, you can't, that's been a kind of a bugaboo for the Ravens offense is give it fumble in the ball. You can't let him kind of take over the game. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I think too, like, when you when you look at this this Chargers defense, they've got all these different weapons and, and players who are, are are dynamic. I think that like I, I do wonder. Go back two years, the Ravens played the Chargers and they basically blew them out. I mean, yeah. that was a great game. Now well, it was a thirty four to six. A lot of different players. It was home. That game got away from the Chargers. How much do you really put into that? Mm-hmm. But like that, they had a lot of those same players on that team, and the yep. Ravens ended up wasn't having that a ton long of success ago right. offensively. Well, and like defensive, defensively, over. defensively, I mean, they held Herbert. Herbert was through for 195 yards. Oh, yeah, I mean, they just it, it, that game was similar to the uh, the Seahawks game. It was similar yep. to the, the Lions uh, game. The Lions game. Yeah. a lot of similarities there. So, I, I, look, I don't really put too much stock into a game two years ago. Yep. But like, we have seen it. We have seen it. And like, all the things that we're saying about this Chargers team were relevant 
two years ago. Yep. Like a lot of talent, dynamic quarterback, good defensive pieces, all that stuff. So I think that this is an opportunity here uh, for the Ravens on a national stage, once again in prime time, to show just how good they are. Yeah. I, I think that this is an opportunity. Now we'll see if they do it, yep. but I think that they play four out of five games in prime time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people around the country are going to be seeing the Ravens as it stands right now. The Ravens are the best team in the AFC. They've got the best record in the AFC. So there's a lot of eyes on this team. Yep. And I think that they're comfortable with that. And I think that I think they relish that. And I think that they're going to have it again. They've got this opportunity to go out there and show everybody watching yep. that they are absolutely one of the best teams in the league. And this is one of the, when you look ahead to the Ravens schedule, they have a tough, Tough schedule remaining. You're going against three division leaders in in the Dolphins, uh, the 49ers, and the Jags. Jags, Exactly. Three division leaders. And so this is a game when you talk about desperate teams and kind of to your point, John Harbaugh said, we're desperate for a win. Because you have to win games like this when when you look ahead to the schedule and what's on the if you're going to stay the number one seed in the AFC you got to win games like this yeah and so uh, it's a, it's a really really big game for both of these teams and it's going to be a really really big big surprise you Bryson jumped out of his shorts I got him big win let's go.